Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good that you've uh, joined with us for our service of Harvest Thanksgiving. To those of you who are with us here in the church, uh, we're delighted that you've joined with us. Thank you for booking in and for being part of that, uh, what's now part of the norm here in Killyman and in a lot of churches because of COVID-19. Thank you for adhering to the COVID regulations, uh, keeping your face masks on and things like that. Uh, as we continue to worship God. We would ask you, as is the norm, whenever you're leaving the building this morning, that you you leave when the stewards direct you as to when to leave. And also, leaving the car park, everybody that's in the church leaves through the bottom gate onto St. Andrew's View uh, and up onto the Tremont Road that way. Uh, Good morning to those listening to us in the cars and their radios. Hopefully they can hear us okay out there. Oh, no horns this morning? Oh, his horn's going. There is. Good. I can't hear them. Uh, Not loud enough out there. Anyway, as is the norm, those joining us on the radio will exit the car park, leaving the church lane onto the Trumount Road. And again, good morning to those who are joining us online in our live stream. And for those of you who are sort of halfway up the church, you can do a wee back wave as we say good morning to them, uh, to them all. Uh, And thank you for our tech team who helped make this happen uh, each week. On all your behalfs, I want to welcome our guest preacher this morning, the Reverend Captain Isaac Hanna. Uh, Isaac is joining us all the way from Kilkeel, so he's had a bit of a journey this morning over the Mourne Mountains. Uh, Isaac and I have known each other for a number of years, and it's a joy to have Isaac with us and to have his wife Diane uh, here this morning as well. Isaac, we've known each other for longer than probably we either of us care. Anyway, I was a young curate to this man. So it's, my, it's his fault that I have turned out the way I am. So you can all blame him as you're leaving church this morning. And if you think I'm a good rector, then praise him. Because uh, it's all his fault. Isaac taught me how not to do things. And uh, brother, it's great to have you here with us uh, as, you, as you share with us in our Harvest Thanksgiving services. Isaac has recently just moved ministries. He was rector of Drumcliff in County Sligo, but he's now heading up church army here in Ireland, uh, which means he's Valerie Tom's boss. And you all know Valerie, and we all know how hard Valerie could be to manage. And uh, I have her eaten out of my hand. You've her eaten out of your hand. That's really good, brother. Eat the Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Valerie. <laughs> Isaac, uh, it is a joy to have you with us. We as a church have been praying for you and your family over the last few, uh, few months and during your transition into your new role. We look forward to what you have to share with us later on in our worship. This evening, we have our Harvest Thanksgiving services continue. uh, And tonight, we have sharing with us uh, the Reverend Canon Malcolm Kingston. Malcolm is currently Rector of St. Mark's in Armagh. And he, in the will of the Lord, COVID permitting and all that, will be with us tonight at 7 o'clock. There's a limited number of spaces left. If you want to come along, there's still time to book in for that. Uh, and you do, throw, do so through the Ticket Source website uh, that we use as a parish, and you can book in uh, for tonight uh, should you wish to come along 7 o'clock. Next Sunday, our family worship is here at half past 11 in the church building. There's no evening service next week because of harvest taking place elsewhere. Um, but again, booking is essential for that. You do it through Ticket Source or by telephoning Heather uh, in the parish office on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings from half past 10 to half past 1, and she'll gladly get you booked in uh, for that service. Wednesday night, our Bible study continues as we're working through the book of 1 John. This week, we'll be entering into chapter 3, and it would be good if you wanted to come along and join us for that. Again, book in through booking sor- or ticket source or the parish office. Bookings for that open tomorrow morning, and uh, you'd be welcome to come and join us. It's here in the church building. Finally, just thank you to those who have given and taken time to decorate the church. It's a harvest with a difference this year. You'll know to look around. It's not the usual displays, but they're displays with a difference. But in some ways, I think this is more what harvest is about. It's about taking what God has given to us and thanking him for the blessings that he has given us and then sharing with those who don't have what we enjoy in our local community. All that you see sitting around the church has been donated by parishioners. Uh, Some of you have have given very generously, and thank you for that. 
and it's all going to go this week to the food bank, to the BCM food bank, uh, which is located in this area. So thank you for that. I think it's a tremendous effort by everybody. As you look around, uh, you could get your week's groceries and more in here easily uh, for, for every family in the parish. So thank you very much uh, for, for doing that with us this year. So we come to worship God. I ask you to please stand. We follow everything that's on the screen. The band's going to join us here at the front. Uh, so please stand as we join in our responses. And let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Ah, the Lord be with you. This is the day which the Lord has made. We pray together. Lord, Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do worship God together as we sing our opening hymn, Morning Has Broken Like the First Morning. Let's praise God together. Morning has broken like the first morning. Like bird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for the springing fresh from the world. The rain's dewfall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dewfall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where his feet pass. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the one light, Eden's a Praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation of the new day. book of Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 20, we read these words, that the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. And so let us kneel or sit together as we confess our sins to God our Father. We confess our sins as individuals because each and every one of us have sinned against God. We confess our sins as a church community because we as a church have neglected to do the things that God calls us to do. We confess our sins as a nation because as a nation we don't always follow God's laws. God's whole creation groans and our sin affects all around us. We confess together our sin in the misuse of God's creation. God, our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and have acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer and in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, Forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. 
confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God has forgiven us, may he help us to praise him. O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 150. We're going to watch the screen and listen to the words of this psalm. And then Isaac's going to read to us from God's Word. Praise the Eternal. Praise the true God inside His temple. Praise Him beneath massive skies, under moonlit stars and rising sun. Praise Him for His powerful acts, redeeming His people. Praise Him for His greatness that surpasses our time and understanding. Praise Him with the blast of trumpets high into the heavens, and praise Him with harps and lyres and the rhythm of the tambourines skillfully played by those who love and fear the Eternal. Praise Him with singing and dancing. Praise Him with flutes and strings of all kinds. Praise Him with crashing cymbals, loud clashing cymbals. No one should be left out. Let every man and every beast, every creature that has the breath of the Lord, praise the Eternal. Praise the Eternal. read this morning from uh, the book of Leviticus, uh, chapter 23, and I'm going to read from uh, verse 9. It's a passage entitled, The Offering of the First Fruits. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, when you enter the land I'm going to give you and reap uh, its harvest, bring to a priest a sheaf of the first grain you harvest. He is to wave the sheath before the Lord so it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest is to wave it on the day after the Sabbath. On the day you wave the sheath, you must sacrifice as a burnt offering to the Lord a lamb a year old without defect, together with its grain offering of one-fifth on an epith of the finest flour mixed with olive oil, a food offering presented to the Lord, a pleasing aroma and its drink offering a quarter of a hen of wine. You must not eat any bread or roasted or new grain until the day, uh, until the very day you bring this offering to your God. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come, wherever you live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I invite you to stand as we reaffirm our faith in our creedal statements. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who created all things? Do you believe and trust in God the Son who died to save us from our sins? Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We say together the collect for harvest. Eternal God, eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness and give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being through Jesus Christ our Lord. The response to our intercessions, Father, thank you, is we give you thanks and bless your holy name. Father, thank you, we give you thanks and bless your holy name. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we live in a rich and wonderful world. You have given us the stewardship of your creation. Lord, help us to work together for the benefit of your whole world and to reveal your glory within it. May we strive for the protection and care of all you have given into our charge. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God, our Creator, we give you thanks for the mystery of life and the beauty of the earth. We remember in your presence all who strive to reveal your glory. We pray for churches throughout the world that seek to help in care and protection of the environment. We ask your blessing on church groups that work in areas of deprivation and with people that are counted as of little importance. We pray for all relief organizations and those working with the world's poor. Father, thank you. We give you thanks and bless your holy name. We give thanks for artists and crafts workers, for musicians and all who enrich our lives by their talent and care. We ask you to bless all who influence our future by the decisions they make in governments or in multi-international companies. We pray for the work of all who are involved in conservation and in fair trade. We remember the unemployed and all who are denied human rights. We ask your blessing upon all oppressed and homeless people. Father, thank you. We give you thanks and bless your holy name. We give thanks for our homes, for our families, for our friends, for the talents that you have given to us. May we use our resources for the benefit of those in need and for the improvement of the world around us. Bless our homes that they may reflect your love and be where your peace and your presence are known to abide. Father, thank you. We give you thanks and bless your holy name. Lord God, giver of life and health, we come to you in our weakness and seek your strength in our troubles. We ask for your blessing on all who suffer, on all who are ill at home, or in hospital. We give thanks for the talent and attention of doctors, nurses, and all who work in the caring profession. We pray for those who are affected by COVID-19. We pray especially for all who feel lonely or neglected, and all who feel they have no one to care for them. Father, thank you. We give you thanks and bless your holy name. Holy and merciful God, we rejoice in your saving power that you have given us life that is eternal. We pray that you would help each of us to prepare our hearts and souls for a greater harvest than the one we celebrate now. That you would help each of us to prepare our lives for the second coming of your Son, that when he calls, we would be gathered with all your people into your garner. We pray that today, Lord, for those who are sad because loved ones are no longer with us. We pray that your comforting spirit would be with those who are bereaved. We continue to lift before you, Lord, the Kennedy family circle, the Wallace family circle, we pray for the Morrow family circle. We ask, Lord, that you would help those who are bereaved to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in remembrance of your goodness in the past and the hope of eternal life in heaven with you. Father, thank you. We give you thanks and bless your holy name. 
And in a moment of stillness and quietness, we bring our own prayers and requests before the Lord of the harvest. Father, thank you. We give you thanks and bless your holy name. Let us join together in the words of the general thanksgiving. Almighty God and merciful Father, we give you hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all your people. We bless you for all the blessings of this life, but above all for your love in redeeming the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. Give us a due sense of your mercy, that our hearts may be thankful, and that we may praise you not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves in your service, and by walking in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rounding all our praises into one, we pray as Christ our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And let us bless one another with the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And just before Isaac comes to speak to us this morning, we're going to sing together our next hymn which is you're the word of God the Father from before the world began, the author of creation. Let's praise God together. You're the word of God, the Father, from before the world began. Every star and every planet has been fashioned by your hand. All creation holds together by the power of your voice. Let the skies declare your glory. Let the land and seas rejoice. You're the author of creation. You're the Lord of every man. And your cry of love rings out across the lands. Yet you left the gaze of angels. Came to seek and save the lost. And exchange the joy of heaven for the anguish of a cross. With a prayer you fed the hungry, with a word you still the scenes. Yet how silently you suffered that the guilty may go free. You're the author of creation, you're the Lord of every man. And your cry of love brings out across the lands. With a shout you rose victorious, wrestling victory from the grave. And ascended into heaven, leading captives in your way. Now you stand before the Father, interceding for your from each tribe and tongue and nation, you are leading sinners home. You're the author of creation, you're the Lord of every man, and your cry of love rings out 
across the land. Let's just sing that last verse again with the shouts. With a shout, you rose victorious, entered victory from the grave, and ascended into heaven, leading captives in your way. Now you stand before the Father, interceding for your own. From each tribe and tongue and nation, you are leading sinners home. You're the author of creation, you're the Lord of every man, and your cry of love rings out across the lands. You're the author of creation, you're the Lord of every man. And your cry of love rings out across the land. Please be seated. Isaac. Testing one, two. Is that better? You know what? Your privileged brother. Oh, okay. Are you going to stand here for the. <laughs> I can't go around now. Um, yeah, it's a great privilege for, for, for me to be here personally. You, I, I'm not unfamiliar with this parish. Um, I can't remember if it was last year or the year, the year before. I. Uh, Not better. Turn the wrong one off. Turn the. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the the original one worked, did it? Let's me go on now. And what I'll maybe do is I'll readjust the mic to here. Not better now. Um, as Mark was saying, uh, he and I have had a long association with one another. Um, he was uh, quite rightly was uh, uh, my curate for a couple of years. And Mahara, but before that, we knew one another because we both served in the same diocese. Usually, I remember my conversations with Mark were usually forgiveness because he was, were you the assistant editor or maybe the editor of the diocesan magazine? And I was usually late with, the, with my contribution, so I usually rang up to say I might be an hour or two, day or two, day or two late. <laughs> Very graciously, he always gave me. Uh, forgiveness and absolution, so I'm grateful for that. But um, we're, we're more than that, we're, we're, we're friends, we're buddies. Um, so it's great to be here, and thank you so much for your invitation to come. Um, Mark alluded earlier, I, uh, my, my role uh, at the moment is uh, I'm responsible for Church Army and its growth and development on the island of Ireland, and uh, I have the challenge. I don't know why it's... What, is there any of Valerie Tom's relatives here this morning, is there? There is, there probably is. But anyway, Valerie and I are good friends. Is that right, Dan? We, you can vouch for that. As long as I do as I'm told, I'm okay where Valerie's concerned. But she's a great asset to Church Army on the Island. And I, 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 we're looking forward to the relaunch of the latest uh, development of her Zagas project. I think it's later this month. So the work at hand... Uh, this morning, we're, we're focusing on harvest, and my background is uh, I grew up in, 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 in a, quite a rural area in the Mourns, where the mountains of Mourns sweep down to the sea, uh, and in the Mourns, in the months of September and October, we celebrate the harvest of the land, and then in the month of November, we celebrate the harvest of the sea. So you, you know, by the time Christmas comes, we're well harvested. And the, 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 the two services are quite similar in some ways, but they're different in other ways. So you can imagine the harvest of the sea where there's all sorts of representation of uh, the, the, the harvest of the sea. And I remember on one occasion we attempted the harvest of the sea 
and my last parish, or the one before last. And Mark was, you didn't know he was a, a, a flower ranger, did you? It's a, this is one of his hobbies. Well, um, we, 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 he got this thing called an oasis. I didn't know what an oasis was until Mark produced this thing. And, it, and he says, I'm going to turn this into a, 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 a sort of a display here for the harvest. And we got this thing up and um, covered it in flowers and all the rest of it. Now, there was a competition in the parish to, to guess what this was. And it was a fish. But anyway, what did we get back? We got, it was a slug. <laughs> somebody's foot, I think. There's also, but anyway, so don't give up your day job is what I would say. Unless maybe your flower range and skills have improved since I saw, maybe they have. He's looking a bit embarrassed there, so I'll not say any more. <laughs> um, but harvest is, is a great time for us to just acknowledge um, that, that we are so dependent on God's provision for all the good things that we enjoy in this world. And God, one of God's names, of course, is Jehovah Jireh, um, the God who provides. And this morning we're going to be thinking about that. And I want to just focus on that, uh, that, that short passage that I read a few moments ago, which focuses on uh, the, the very first celebration of harvest, which was the giving of the first fruits, just prior to the God's people moving into the promised land that they had been told about, this land flowing with milk and honey. And God, God through Moses, gave the people some instructions. And the first instruction was to get one of these. Does anybody know what this thing is? I was looking to see if there's any of these things running about in the fields. What is this here? What's this? Yes, this is a sheep. Yep, this is, this is actually a representation of a year-old lamb without fault or blemish. And, you know, the wonderful thing about lambs is, um, partic- well, I don't know, are we getting lamb, roast lamb later on, are we? The goats, we're having the old goat for dinner. Um, but anyway, the, the wonderful thing about lamb is that throughout the, the Bible, there was, different, there was different representations of what the lamb meant. And at the very beginning of this, we're told that this lamb, a year old without blemish, perfect lamb, was to be sacrificed. The lamb, I think, reminds us of a couple of things. First of all, it reminds us, and I don't know whether you've ever cut your knee or anything out there, but I, I, when I cut myself, it's usually, if you're squeamish, but it's usually a bit of a mess, and it gets everywhere, and it's hard to clean. And in the Bible, it talks about, every time it talks about this thing called sin, which has fallen short of God's perfect standard, has been, has been like red or scarlet. But Scripture also says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as wool. And of course, later on, the lamb was identified as being Jesus himself. If you remember John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus passing by, he says, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And the prophet Isaiah said that the Lord laid on this perfect lamb, all of our transgressions. Before that, he said, all we like sheep have gone astray, each one to his own way, but the Lord has laid on him all of our sin. So the lamb is a reminder of Jesus, who on the cross paid that price for us, so that we could know forgiveness and new life. Now the next thing that was to be offered was this thing here. Does anybody know what this is here? Now I've wrapped it carefully under the, these COVID, yes? Yes, it's a big, this is a big loaf of bread, yep. And I've wrapped it so that we're, we're all COVID compliant. Nobody has touched this bread. Ordinarily I would have shared it around, but obviously, you know, it's probably best that we don't do that. But this is another picture that we get from this a piece of scripture, the, the, the priest was to wave the sheaf of grain and that was to remind the people 
that there's a harvest. And as a result of that harvest we can, of grain, we can make bread. And Jesus himself said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And what he's saying there is, you know, we search around for all sorts of things to satisfy not only our physical hunger, but also a deep need inside us to just be at peace with ourselves, to be satisfied. If I was brought up in China, they have a saying out there that the, the Chin Chinese have two stomachs. One stomach is for all the vegetables and meat and all the rest of it, maybe sweet stuff, but there's another stomach, and that's the rice stomach. And they're never really satisfied. They don't really feel as if they've had a meal until that stomach is filled. I'd like to suggest that here in, in, in Ireland, or Northern Ireland, uh, we have a potato stomach. Um, my dad is of the, of, the, of the era where he never felt that he'd had a proper dinner unless he'd had the spud. Now, I know you're far too sophisticated to know what a spud is. It's a spud is, an, is what the Mourn people call a potato. But maybe you call it, maybe they call it spuds around here as well, do they? This is potatoes, right? Your anchor says it's potato right here. Well, that's, right. Jesus can satisfy us in ways that we never thought possible. All our striving cease when we eat of the bread of life. Now, the next thing that, that it talks about in the, this, this uh, festival of harvest of uh, first fruits was the grapes or the wine. Now, if I, was to, if I was to drink this whole bottle of wine, what would happen to me? Yes? I would get very drunk. <laughs> I'm not going to pursue that anymore. I, was gonna, I could ask if you ever seen anybody get drunk, but um, yes, I'd get... What would happen? What would happen? My legs would dirt to go like that there. I'd, I'd make a fool of myself, wouldn't I? I would totally change who I am. Um, my wife is probably sitting there thinking, well, you're, you're silly enough without drinking that there. Uh, and, and she's probably right. My, I have a brother who used to make this stuff. And the most potent wine that you can drink is probably the home brew. You know that home brew stuff that used to be, used to be quite common years ago? He used to make this stuff out of blackberries. And it was dynamite. Dynamite. This uns you have a bit of an old po faced relative come round, and we used to have a couple of ladies that come round, and nothing but doom and gloom, until one night we discovered my brother Bobby's homemade wine. And he brought the homemade wine out, and one glass it was enough. These ladies were laughing, and they were. It was a. Well, I'm not recommending that you do that, but it changes us, doesn't it? And if you think forward to the. The, the, the festival of weeks which comes after that reading, it, it, that was, that's another word for Pentecost. And what happened at Pentecost was the power of the Lord entered in to those fearful disciples who suddenly were so overcome with this power from God himself that they were transformed so much so that those around them thought that they were drunk, that they were tipsy. But actually, history and scripture records that those men were transformed. They were transformed. Why? Because they'd taken in the Holy Spirit. So the wine reminds us of that there. That we can be transformed by God's Spirit to live the life that um, He wants us to live and be the people that He wants us to be. Now, does anybody know what this here is? That's a harder one. You might have to read the label even. I'll give you a clue. You could use this for, um, you can put it on your salad. Ah, yep, this is a, this is olive oil, but this is very special olive oil. This here is, is the first pressing of the oil. They take two or three pressings of the oil and the first one is called 
the act of virgin pressing. And that means that it's the most pure pressing of the oil. And you know, Scripture talks about t- ch- Scripture talks about this. It talks about the oil of joy and of gladness. And you know something, that's what I'm involved in telling people about and I've experienced myself that a relationship with Jesus results in great joy. Now, you'll not, you'll, you'll get me wrong here, your life will not be without problems. But deep down, there's a, a humble certainty that no matter what life throws at you, we can be sure that the Lord is with us and for us eternally. And interestingly, the oil as well as for cooking and all these other purposes, was used to put on a sheep's head. And I'm sure the farmers don't use this now anymore, but this was, a, this was a way of soothing any old sore or if there was a parasite or a fly bothering the, the sheep. They pour, this, they pour the oil over it, and it was, it was a kind of a healing property in it. The oil of joy and gladness. So here we have all sorts of things that point to one person and point to the good news of Jesus. This harvest, it's good for us to think about Jesus who was the perfect lamb, who laid down his life for us, who'd gone astray, each one to our own way. But the Lord laid on that sinless uh, lamb of God the sins of us all so that we could know fellowship with him. The thing that I forgot to mention about the bread was, yes, we could have shared it, but do you know something? Diane and I have traveled far and near. We've lived in England, we've lived in the Republic, we've lived in all sorts. If you want to get to really know somebody well, we discovered. I know this is quite a settled community, and you maybe know everybody. If you ever travel, sit down and have a meal with them. And after that meal is over, it feels as if you're, you've made a friend. And that's what Jesus is saying to us. He says, eat of me and you'll know my eternal friendship. And not only that, you'll be part of God's loving family, the church as well. You're saying to me, but how can I live this life? I know what I'm like. I don't want to be a hypocrite. The wine reminds us that God can fill us with his new wine, the wine of the Holy Spirit, who who gives us the power to be transformed. Mark and I, when we ministered together, this was something we saw on a regular occasion, wasn't it? When, When the good news that both of us had experienced in our own lives was shared with others, we saw people's lives transformed. Why? Because they gave the first fruit of their own life, and that was their own life. And the Lord gave back so much more. And the result of all of that was joy and gladness. I'm going to end with a wee bit of a story. And um, this is a story of a guy called Willie, who's far enough away and from, how far is it from, well, anyway, not, anyway, this is the guy that both Mark and I met on one occasion. Willie had lived um, a life where he'd never known satisfaction. And I got a phone call to go to Willie's bedside, and Willie'd got some bad news. And uh, Willie and I were sitting chatting to one another, and uh, <laughs> he uh, he was going to get married the next day. Uh, this was his second or third wife. So the wife, the new wife to be, was away getting things sorted out with the with the nurse, as it turned out. I thought I was going to be asked to do it, but nope, that wasn't my job that day. I got talking to Willie, and I've been in the habit, particularly when people have received really bad news, I'd have the wee pocket scripture in my breast pocket or wherever. And that day it was out in the car. And I didn't want to go out, but I had something else, this wee booklet, knowing God personally. 
And then it uh, was basically a summary of what we've just heard, that all of us have gone our own way, but God's done something about it through his precious son, Jesus. And if we let him into our life, he can satisfy us with eternal things, including forgiveness and new life. And I read him all these wee scripts. I says, if nothing here, you just listen to this. And he says, I, I says, at the end of it all, I says, if we pray, there's a wee prayer in this booklet. I want you to listen to it. This is the prayer. Lord Jesus, I want to know you personally. I'm sorry for going my own way instead of your way. Thank you for dying on the cross to forgive my sin. Please come and take first place in my life and make me the person you want me to be. And Wally sat and looked at me and he says, could you read it again? He says, that's a great prayer. I've never heard that prayer before. And I says, I will. Lord Jesus, I want to know you personally. I'm sorry for going your own way instead of your way. Thank you for dying on the cross to forgive my sin. Please come and take first place in my life and make me the person you want me to be. I says, what do you think? That's, that's an amazing prayer. He says, reach into that drawer there to get the hearing aid out. And put the hearing aid in. Because at that stage I was shouting around the ward. I said, you can read it for yourself, but I'm not sure he was, that, he was that able to read very much because he hadn't the glasses and his illness was such that, well, I'll not go into it. Time was short. And then Willie, when I'd read him the prayer again, two or three other more times, he says, you know something? He says, that's an amazing prayer. He says, you know, and this is, <laughs> I've rattled on for a while here, so apologies, but this is one of the most profoundest sermons that I've ever heard preached to me. And he said this. He says, if more people would pray that prayer and mean it, the world would be a different place. Well, you're right. You're a wise man. I says, Wally, do you think, could you read the, could you pray this prayer and mean it yourself? He says, let me hear it again. Lord Jesus, I want to know you personally. I'm sorry for going my own way instead of your way. Thank you for dying on the cross to forgive my sin. Please come and take first place in my life and make me the person that you want me to be. I says, Wally, here's what I'll do. Make it easy. Or easier for you. I says, I'm going to read the line, each line. I'm going to leave enough time for you to repeat that in your own heart or out loud. Remember, and of course, we're sitting in a ward of other men. And I says, I'll leave that up to you. Or I says, if you want to pray another prayer that's appropriate to you at this particular time, pray that. And so we did. And he did. Just in time. Because the condition that he had deteriorated so quick that I'm not sure that he could have had that conversation with me a week down the line or two weeks. So we prayed the prayer together. And the lamb who died for him gave him the greatest gift that he could ever know. Forgiveness, eternal friendship, a plan for his life, albeit a very short life. He satisfied him. He gave him the power to be transformed and the oil of gladness. On the way out of that hospital ward that morning, this boy called me over and he had some desperate skin condition. The skin was red and flaky. And anyway, it was. And I says, I says, can I have one of these wee booklets? I says, I did. 
He says, yeah. I said, did you pray that wee prayer when I was shouting it through the, the ward? He says, I did. <coughs> Woolley sadly passed away. And um, the day of his funeral, I'll let your rector tell the background to this story, but it was a bit chaotic, wasn't it? It was a bit, yeah, anything could have happened. It's one of those funerals where anything could have happened. But you know, by the time that the funeral was over, Mark, who's my curate at the time, I says, I'm going to use that same prayer here. An old woolly who had been dismissed as the as sort of the town joke. The story of his coming to faith led, I'm sure, almost 20 people that day to faith. And you're maybe saying, well, what, you know, what could God do with my life? Take the example of woolly. Take the example of us two and give him the first fruit of your life, the thing that was given to you at your birth. That's your very soul. You'll be glad to hear we're, we've come into land almost. But today as you're listening to this story and I suppose a recap of the good news through that first harvest, (coughs) maybe this is a good day not only to celebrate the harvest that we see around us, but also a good day to give your life, if you haven't given it already, to the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. Let's bow our heads in prayer. And what I'm simply going to do is pray this wee prayer, um, which I'll read once more. Um, I'm going to read it out, and then I'm going to read it line by line, giving you an opportunity, if if you feel that it's right. The Lord has been knocking away at at the door of your life. Today's a good day to let him in. Maybe... If you've already done that, it would be a good day for to just pray for something else that you feel is right for you at this time. This is the prayer. Lord Jesus, I want to know you personally. I'm sorry for going my own way instead of your way. Thank you for dying on the cross to forgive my sin. Please come and take first place in my life and make me the person you want me to be. If you can pray this prayer and mean it, then today is an opportunity for that to happen. And so we begin. Lord Jesus, I want to know you personally. I'm sorry for going my own way instead of your way. Thank you for dying on the cross to forgive my sin. Please come and take first place in my life. And make me the person you want me to be. Amen. Thank you very much for being so attentive. Um, You've been the best congregation I've preached to this morning. Uh, But all joking aside, it's good to be here and share in fellowship with you. If you've prayed that prayer, then, you know, maybe there's somebody in your, your, you know, in, in your church family, your rector, you want to say to me or whatever, it's good, and we would love to help. Um, I don't know whether there's anybody else, but anybody else that you trust, 
um, to have that conversation with. And maybe even ask for one of these book bits as, a, as a, an acknowledgement just of having made that decision on this harvest celebration when there's all sorts of harvests, hopefully, to celebrate. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac, for speaking to us and bringing God's word so faithfully to us uh, this morning and for for challenging us in our own personal walks with the Lord. We're going to conclude our worship by singing together a well-known hymn. The band's going to join us again at the front. O Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder, how great thou art. Whenever we finish singing this, we will have our benediction, and then we'll ask you to be seated and the stewards will direct you as to when to leave. Isaac and myself will go outside. Now, we can't do the usual shaking hands and greeting as we, as we used to do, but socially distancing, if you are concerned about your soul and you want to have a chat with either of us, we're here for you. Uh, that's, we'd be more than, more than happy uh, to take that time with you this morning. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the works thy hand hath made. As we sing this, think of the words that we're singing because we do worship an amazing and an almighty God who has done so much for us and we do so little for him. And let's sing out our souls as we sing, How Great Thou Art. Hannah, what key are we in? E flat. Oh, B flat. Okay, thank you. stand as we praise God together. Oh, 
God's Mary sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away. with me one last time just without the band just unaccompanied as we praise God and thank him and say how great he is then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Just one last time. Then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Praise God. May the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all created things, upon you, his children, that you may use them to his glory and the welfare of all people. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Please be seated.